Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tibbetts Physics. What is crapping in? I'm Mr. Tibbetts, and today we're going to look at the metric system, scientific notation, and order of magnitude. If you're a Harry Potter fan, we might want to call that order of phoenix. Also, quick spoiler alert, the child in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is... Just kidding, I'm not going to spoil that for you. So the first thing we want to look at is the metric system. And before we get to that, let's look at this. What is the temperature of your body? Most of us would just say 98.6. Or 98, but hopefully 98.6. Maybe you said 98.6 degrees. Or maybe you even said 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The question is, is where did 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit come from? Well, we need to understand that our temperature is based on a scale, just like every other measurement we have. And it happens to be when our body is at, in homeostasis, based on the scale, it's 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not some random specific number. It's just due to the scale that our body is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's talk about these international system of units. The international system of units. Or we could call it the SI units, system international. Or we might know it as the metric system. So let's look at a map of all the countries in the entire Earth, or planet, that use the metric system. Those that are highlighted in red are countries that don't use the metric system. So let's look at those countries. We've got the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii, I think that's it over there, that do not use the metric system. Liberia over here that doesn't use the metric system. And another country called Myanmar that does not use the metric system. So on the entire planet, these are all the countries that do not use the metric system. And again, the United States is the most powerful. So let's scroll down a little bit. Countries that have put men on the moon. Well, naturally, the United States would be a country that put a man on the moon. Obviously, because it's the most powerful country in the world. So by default, we got to look at the other two countries that haven't put a man on the moon, but probably are going to next because they do not use the SI units. So Myanmar over here should probably put a man on the moon. And Liberia over here should be putting a man on the moon any day now, I think. Now, scientists are pretty lazy when they're dealing with numbers. The first thing that we're going to look at are the powers of 10. And that helps us when we're writing really, really large numbers or really, really small numbers. So powers in 10 include numbers that are con continuously being multiplied or divided by 10. So 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so forth. Or we could go the other way and divide by 10. So we have 0 0.1 or 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, 1 thousandth, and so on. Of course, we could get even lazier. Instead of using the powers of 10, we could use what are called prefixes. And pre prefixes are powers of 10 except with words. So we're going to use words to explain powers of 10. So for instance, we have like kilo milli, centi. Now, usually you're told to memorize these, but fortunately we can look them up right in our reference table. So let's look at the bottom left of the first page, and we've got a table of prefixes. Let's get that on here for you. There we go. Okay, so prefixes. They start with Terra, that's 10 to the 12th goes all the way down to pico, that's 10 to the negative 12th. Now those are the words that go in front of our units of measurement. The most common one that we'll use for the first half of the year is meters. 
So when we read these, we're going to say one terameter, or capital T, lowercase m, terameter, is equal to 1 times 10 to the 12th meters. Let's look at another one. Let's look at Mega, Mega Man. 1 Mega, capital M, meter, is equal to, we go over to the notation, 1 times 10 to the 6 meters. Notice that the 1 goes in front of the prefix, and the scientific notation 1 times 10 to the 6 goes next to the base unit. So why don't you try this one on your own. Let's do uh, centi. You should have gotten 1 centimeter is equal to, we go all the way over, 1 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. Sorry if my handwriting is a little sloppy. I asked this waitress this morning for decaf coffee, and unfortunately she gave me caffeinated coffee, and my hands got the shakes. Just kidding, I'm drinking decaffeinated tea this morning. It's a little too early for caffeine. Okay, let's try one last one together. Let's do one meter. Whoa. Okay, let's do one last one together. Let's do one meter. So one meter is equal to, in scientific notation, one times 10 to the zero meters. Remember, anything times 10 to the zero is equal to one. All right, moving on. Now let's look at, all right, moving on. Now let's look at units of measurement. The first one we'll look at is length. Length, as we may or may not know, measures distance, which we've heard of, and it also measures, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, and it also measures displacement, which is going to be a new word that we'll learn next week. To measure distance, or displacement, or length, we use a meter stick and its units are meters, or just M for short. Okay, next unit of measurement is mass. We often use mass incorrectly back before we took physics. But once we, become, once we become professional physicists, hopefully we all use it correctly. So mass is a measurement of inertia. We can also say it's a measurement of matter, so what you are made up of. To measure mass, we use a balance. And the units of mass are not grams, they're not pounds, they're kilograms. or kg. So notice a standard unit for mass already has a prefix in it because grams is such a small number <clears throat> that we'd be, be dealing with a lot of mass or a lot of grams for little things. Okay, next, time. This video is taking a lot of time to make. So time measures, I guess we could say time. It moves on forever, eh, for the most part. We measure time using a watch that's all relative to us. I guess we could say the sun if we went back a few hundred years, but let's just say the watch for lab. And the units of time are seconds, or S for short. So we always use seconds when we're measuring time. Okay, a couple more. Next we've got force. A force, you learned in physical science if you took it, is a push or a pull. 
Now, oftentimes, we also call the force due to gravity our weight. Force is used is measured using a spring scale. Kind of like the things you weigh your fruits and vegetables at, at grocery stores. And its units are newtons. Capital N for short. And the last one is temperature, which you use a lot with in chemistry. Temperature is actually a measurement of energy. And really all it is is how fast are particles jiggling back and forth. To measure energy, we use a thermometer. And in this class, we'll either use degrees Celsius or Kelvins. We don't deal with temperature too much in Regents Physics, but those would be the standard units. Alrighty, so we got two more topics, topics to cover for our first lesson. The first topic is scientific notation. Without the accent above the N, of course. So let's just take a random number. We'll say 1.24 times 10 to the 13th, and let's put units after it, after it, meters. So all scientific notation is, is using the times 10 to the 13th, instead of writing out 1,2,4,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,
Okay, so the mass of the proton is zero point whole bunch of zeros, one, six, seven kilograms. So why don't you try and figure it out on your own and we'll compare answers. All right, so this time we're going to count towards the right until we get in between the last, the next non, the next two non-zero numbers. And we're going to count each time we move to the right. So each place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, until we get between the 1 and the 6. So in scientific notation, it's 1.67 times 10. We went the other way around, so it's going to be to the negative 27 kilograms. Now, one last thing, speaking of powers of 10, oftentimes we may be asked to compare two numbers based on how far they are, how far off they are. And we don't really care about the 167 or the 240 in this case when we're dealing with such large or, or such a wide range of values. So that's when we look at the order of magnitude. That's our last topic for today. Order of magnitude. And in simple terms, all the order of magnitude is, is the number above the power of 10. So the order of magnitude of the distance to the Andromeda galaxy is the number above the power of 10, which is 22. The order of magnitude of the mass of the proton is the number above the power of 10, which is negative 27. What is the order of magnitude of the speed of light? If you look it up in your reference, tab reference tables really quick, it is 8. 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching Tibbetts Physics. See ya.